uh, there are a number of things that come to mind when I think about how I would advise my younger self. Obviously, with time, there comes some wisdom. And I would say first, uh, on, on sort of on the trivial behavioral level, is never, ever, ever, ever blow your cool. I think that's extraordinarily important for a physician, but it's important for anyone. Um, the next thing is, uh, I think that uh, I, and certainly anyone in the field, should be more aware of the sacrifices that your family makes when you pursue an aggressive career. Uh, I'm lucky in that my wife came from a military family. Her father was away a lot. He was in the Navy. So she was kind of used to the absences, but I think we have to be much more aware. And I certainly should have been much more aware of the sacrifices that my family made, uh, my children and my wife, obviously, uh, to, to deal with the, the difficulties of having a, a father and, and uh, a husband uh, who pursued an aggressive academic medical career. Uh, and the final uh, piece of advice is I would advise my younger self to pay more attention to the literature and to be more versed in the science. Uh, it's, you know, as you know, the literature of science and medicine has exploded in the last 30 years or 40 years since I've been in the field. And just keeping up is just much more difficult. And I think we have to be aware that it's unbelievably important to be up on the literature of science and medicine. I would think the key turning points for me relate to meeting different mentors. I mean, it really emphasizes the importance of a mentor, or as we say colloquially, having a rabbi, not in a religious sense, but in a professional sense in your professional life. Uh, for me, the turning points were uh, getting interested in biology and medicine when I was a college student by meeting uh, a guy named Jim Darnell and a guy named Cy Leventhal. Leventhal, I believe, has passed away, but Jim Darnell was my thesis advisor as a graduate student, still with us at the age of 93, uh, really uh, impressive individual, Lasker Award winner. So having, encountering him, attending a course, and then going on, working in his lab, and then having him as my thesis advisor when I was a graduate student, that was a huge turning point. Uh, the other turning point probably relates to uh, time as a fellow when I was at the NCI and meeting uh, Steve Rosenberg and then working in his lab. So again, it relates to what kind of mentors have you encountered in your career? And uh, the experience of working with Rosenberg, both clinically and then scientifically, uh, was huge. And uh, I think it really directed me to want to go into the field of uh, melanoma research, immunotherapy, et cetera. And it sort of set the tone for what I would think was a real role model. Uh, and then finally, I think going to a supportive uh, work environment when I went to the University of Southern California, again, another great mentor, Peter Jones, who was then the head of the Cancer Center, a distinguished scientist, uh, being in a supportive environment where I could develop, I think was extraordinarily important for my career and for me personally. You know, compared to 20, 30, 40 years ago, succeeding as either a basic scientist, a PhD or an MD, or uh, uh, succeeding as a physician scientist as an MD or an MD PhD, is so much more difficult. And uh, I think it's become evident to many of the funding agencies, such as CITSI, that you have to have something like the forward fund. I mean, you have to have something to support junior faculty because previously it was, you know, you had R01 funding, you had American Cancer Society funding, and you didn't have much else. You didn't have foundations. You didn't have things like uh, the Forward Fund. And uh, the junior people were kind of left on their own. It was, uh, you know, you dive in the deep end and you uh, sink or swim. I think today it's become much more obvious that you have to nurture these people along. It's so much more difficult today to make a career as a physician scientist or a basic scientist in translational areas. Uh, it's just so much more important now to be putting effort and resources into promoting the careers of the junior faculty. Uh, one thing that I've spent some time doing here is uh, I, we wrote a grant to the NCI called the K-12, which is a mentoring junior faculty grant. And I think it's that sort of effort that needs to be put forward so much more today than it was 20, 30, 40 years ago to keep this field moving along. Otherwise, we'll lead our young and the field will die. But I think it's so important to promote junior faculty. 
being named a fellow of the Academy of Immuno-Oncology to me means a lot because in my personal opinion, all through my life, the most important thing professionally to me has been the respect and the views of my colleagues. Uh, to me, that's infinitely more important than your rank, uh, your salary, your, your tenure, your, uh, you know, any of the honors that we have as academics. It's really the respect of the people you work with and you work under that counts for me. And being a fellow of the Academy of Immuno-Oncology means I've earned the respect of my peers and my colleagues, and that means a huge amount to me, uh, more than almost any other honor that I could receive.